everybody doing? Good. Woo! Amen. Good. All right, we're going to go ahead and stay standing. We're going to pray real quick. I just want to get us into the right place of worship. Amen. Father God, we just want to thank you for this night. We just ask for will that they don't see me up here, Lord God, that they just hear your words coming out of my mouth, Lord God, and they just are able to just receive it and grab something that they can feed on and they can take with it and be able to bless others with your name. We just praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I'm not going to use that anyway. <laughs> All right, so lesson two today, it's going to be using the gifts to minister. Yeah. So how can you take the love of God you have received and share it with other people? Yeah. How can you be effective minister to others? In 1 Peter 4.11 it says, if any man shall speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. Good. So to speak as the oracles of God means to speak as God's mouthpiece. Amen? Yeah. So the first gift that we're going to talk about tonight is being God's mouthpiece. In Proverbs 13, 3, it says, Be careful what you say and protect your life. A careless talker destroys himself. Wow, Any good. careless talkers in here? Yeah. No, just me. Hey, man, that's good. Amen. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and practice that right now, matter of fact. Good. So everybody, go ahead and get up. Okay. This is right. Wednesday night, and you're not going to be tired on my watch. Okay. Woo! <laughs> All right, so you guys are going to repeat after me. Devil, Devil, I know you're coming from my head. I know you're coming from my head. But you better be careful. But you better be careful. Because I'm coming right back for yours. Because I'm coming right back for yours. Come on, I might be stepped on, but I'm not crushed. I might be stepped on, but I'm not crushed. I am persecuted. I am persecuted. But not struck down. But not struck down. Amen. Amen. Good. That's it. That's right. God is so good. Amen. Praise God. Let me tell you something. No matter what the devil does to us, yeah. he can't hurt us. That's Praise right. God. Right? I might be struck down, but I will not be destroyed. Right. Because we have victory in Jesus Christ in all areas of our life. So in no way is the devil really able to actually hurt us. Right. What happens is we get inside of our own minds and we start talking upon ourselves instead of talking how God sees us. Yeah. Instead of talking with the mouthpiece that God has given to us by the Holy Spirit that's inside <coughs> of us, working through us to be able to bless others. Instead, we're cursing ourselves, we're cursing our situations, and we're cursing everything that comes and happens around us. Right. But from now on, we're going to start using that mouthpiece to bless God. The devil, he's coming. But we are ready for him. Right. We're always ready for him. We're always going to be ready for him because God has empowered us to be that way. I'm going to tell you something. The devil's been coming for me. You may know it or you may not know it, but that man's been coming. He's been trying to take me out. He has been trying to destroy me. Right. He has made me at one night feel like wanting to kill myself. Oh, I know. Yeah. I'm going to be real with you guys right now tonight. Right. These feelings are serious and this stuff really happens. But what he doesn't take into account is we got it. <laughs> we got God. Amen. Amen. And so we have somebody who has come in. And so when I start feeling that way, I remember that God knows the plans that he has for me. He has plans for a future for myself and a hope for myself. And let me tell you what hope is right here. Let's go down right here. In Isaiah 40, 31. Yeah. It says, those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not grow faint. Amen. Tell your neighbor, you will not grow faint. You will not grow faint. In Jesus' name. You will not grow faint. You have a gift to minister. Amen. We're going to run through those gifts real quick. Let's go down to um, 1 Corinthians Chapter 12, verses 6 through 10. Good. Or you could just go to page 214 on your handouts. <laughs> I'm going to be going a little off script tonight. I hope that's all right. No, that's not good. Verse 5. Verse 5. First Corinthians. First Corinthians. So, the spiritual gifts that God gives to us is one, the words of wisdom. That is a supernatural revelation from God. Of his mind and purpose. That's good. The word of knowledge. That's a supernatural revelation from God. Of any fact 
or event. The gift of faith. That is the supernatural ability to believe God without doubting or reasoning. Again, not getting too far into our own heads. The gifts of healing. That's the supernatural ability to heal sickness without human aid or medication. The work of miracles. That's a supernatural intervention that produces miracles contrary to natural laws. Prophecy. A supernatural utterance inspired by God, spoken in a known language by the speaker. Discerning of spirits. A supernatural revelation from God of the presence or activities of the spirits. The different kinds of tongues, which is a supernatural utterance inspired by God, and that is an unknown language to ourselves. So when we don't know what to pray, we pray in tongues. Why? Because God knows what to pray. I don't know about you, but every once in a while, I find myself praying for somebody, and I'm not exactly praying for them. I'm really praying something that God wouldn't want me asking for them. Sometimes we get upset. Sometimes we get hurt. Yeah. And sometimes we just don't want somebody else that hurt us to be happy. Yeah. But yeah. when you pray in these tongues, right, and you don't know what you're saying, and you're giving it to God and allowing Him to take over what you want to say, yeah. now you've alleviated yourself from responsibility. And I was great at that as a kid. I would blame <laughs> everybody else in my car. Yeah. But it's an amazing thing that we have God to lean on. Yeah. Especially when it comes to prayer, right? Because we, we want to be right there. We want to be on top of that. Sometimes our minds can't do that. But that's okay because God can. And anyone who's saved has the power of tongues. I'll tell you that right now. And then we have, lastly, the interpretation of tongues. A supernatural utterance inspired by God. Interpreting an unknown tongue. So as we all have a different gift that God gives to us, it's the same God and it's yes. the same spirit working in us to be able to produce. Amen? Amen. So for me, I'm kind of like Joseph, right, where I have dreams. And when you have dreams and you're walking in what Christ has given to you through a dream, being willing to stand up and say something, especially in front of people, can be a little more difficult than it seems, right? Yeah. And so, one night, God gave me these dreams. I actually started taking a class that Pastor Greg helped me get into. And I needed it because I knew that I had this gift, but I didn't exactly know what to do with it or how to even understand it, right? Which is okay because that's what that's what learning's about, right? right. You know, you have a, you, you might be you know the superheroes from those movies, right? They're kids, and they're like, I got the superpower, and I'm gonna go with Frozen because it's my daughter's favorite movie, and she's over here freezing everybody and freezes the land because she doesn't know how to control the powers that yeah. she has been given, yeah. and then at the end, it's love and everything, right. all that. <laughs> it's great. Right. Amen. Amen. It's kind of biblical to think about it, right? No? That's right. That's right. Come on. And so, so anyway, one night, I'm having these, I'm having these dreams. It's late. It's late at night, and then the next morning, we get up, Sunday service. And so, I'm on my way to church, and it's interesting because Next thing you know, I'm getting a, a sensory word of knowledge, right? And so that's when, for me, it was like there was a popping in my ear. And so I came to church, and pastor allowed me to come up and speak. It was interesting because the people that I had, when, when I was on the way to church, I had somebody specifically on my mind about one of the words being about their family. But it was weird because when you look on Facebook, a lot of times if someone only posts the good stuff, you don't know what's going on, right? And so I, I had a, two dreams that night, and one was a man had fire in his lungs, and the other one it was a baby that was having problems breathing. And so with the man that had fire in his lungs, the man came up, boom, prayed for me, got healed, right? And then the one with the, the ears, Pastor's mom actually had come that day visiting, and it was her ears, and she got healed. 
But the one that really just hit me the most was at the time it was Pastor Isaiah, the, the youth minister, right? Because when I came up and I said, okay, somebody's baby, and I had to put it out there, right? It's a hard word to give. And the pastor walked up to me and said, whisper to my ear, that's Pastor Isaiah's name. And I'm like, they were the one. He was, I was like, I could not figure out why his face was in my head on my way to church. And, why, and I was like, no, their baby's just fine. That doesn't make any sense, right? And so after everyone sat down, I literally run out of the church. I get him on the phone. I'm like, hey, brother, this is the word that I got, man. Blah, blah, blah. And he's like, hold on a second. He, he puts me on speaker so his wife can hear it. So I tell him the same thing. And his wife just starts crying. And he's like, bro, because I had the dream late last night. He said, man, late last night, the doctor came in and said that because our baby was having a murmur and really bad breathing problem, they said that your baby was okay. He's like, but we stayed up all night wow. worrying Look at and stayed up like sleepless. We were, we were just afraid. Yeah. He's like, but that word just brought us peace. Yeah. And so God was bringing them peace to their situation to yeah. understand that your baby is completely healed and you don't have to worry about it. Yeah. Right. Like how good is God? Amen. 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 You know, when we when we speak out on these things, it can be hard for us mentally. Yeah. But if we go back in the times of of, of Genesis, right? Of Joseph, and, and when we really look back and let's be honest, they had it a little bit tougher. Right? Because Joseph, the youngest brother, he's sitting here you know, having these, he's had this dream, and he tells him about it, and his brothers got a little bit jealous. So jealous, if you don't know the story, that he ends up, they sell him into slavery. So he goes into slavery, and he goes over there to be a slave in Egypt, and next you know he's accused of rape for doing nothing wrong, right? Because he does the right thing. She's like, yep, you did that. Now he's in jail because of his dream. Yeah. He's Amen. in jail because he spoke up about his dream and he ends up in jail. Yeah. It's good. But what else happened? Okay. His dream also not only took him out of jail, that's right, set him free! Took him from prison to the penthouse. That's right, that's right. But he made him number two in yeah. all of Egypt. Praise God. Matter of fact, if you go to Genesis 41 40, the Pharaoh says, You will be in charge of my court. And all my people will take orders from you. Only I, sitting on my throne, will have a rank higher than yours. Amen. See, we can't be afraid to share these things. Why? Because you have no idea, regardless of the pain you go through now, regardless of the way things don't work out the way you think they're going to work out, regardless of all the pain, all the stuff that's not fair, you have no idea that God is going to raise you up into a place that you would have never been able to expect. And all you're going to be able to do is give him the glory because there's nothing that you can do to get there by yourself. That is how good our God is. Amen. I'm going to read the other. Uh, we're going to go to Romans. If you go back to page 215, you can look at those two or you can go into Romans 12, 6 to 8. But we also have these other gifts, right? Yeah. So prophecy, supernatural utterance inspired by God, spoken in a known language by the speaker. Yeah. Ministry, serving others, practical service. Yeah. Teaching, to explain, expound, to impart instruction. Good. Exhortation, to urge, advise, encourage, beseech, admonish, comfort, or warn. Yeah. Giving, sharing generously, gifts offered to God and others. <clears throat> Ruling, leading, or leadership. Good. Mercy. Compassion shown to an offender or victim. That's good. So we look at these gifts that we have, right? Yeah. And a lot of times we feel like our gifts aren't as good as someone else's because we feel like they may be reaching more or they may be touching more or they may be helping more. That's good. But I'm going to tell you how the smallest gift, yeah. how the smallest gift that you can have Come on. Can bless somebody's life. Praise God. There was a man, this is a true story. There was a man who he would walk around and smile at everyone and just say hi to him. Yeah. One day, this person who saw him doing that all the time 
They literally ask, why are you always smiling, man? Why are you always smiling at everybody that walks past you and saying hi? Most of these people don't even care about you, and they just walk away from you anyway. So why are you even doing it? You know what he tells them? He said, one day, I want to commit suicide. Yeah. Because nobody acknowledged me. Wow. Nobody acknowledged my presence. Yeah. Nobody acknowledged me as a person. Yeah. yeah. So good. And one person walked by, and they smiled at me and said hi. Praise God. Mm -hmm. And it changed my life oh, forever. Amen. That's what he said to me. Yeah. It changed him so much. That he now goes and he does that to everyone else because he has no idea when he's going to run into that one person Great who needs God. him to say hi. You have no idea when you're going to run into that one person that needs you to just give them a smile. That's so good, Jack. They might just need you to give them a hug. When, 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 when they say at the church, get up and give everybody a hug and say hi. If you see somebody new, you better be saying hi to them. Yeah. Because when we come in here, we don't know anybody. That's when we come in here, we don't know what we're giving to people. We have no idea the littlest thing. So when someone asks you, hey, would you stand at the back and just welcome people in here to say hi to them when they walk so in the good. door? That's, that's the right. biggest thing you can do. That's just as big as pastor up here, give them the word and save in their souls. Because it starts at the back. Amen. Yeah. It's not starting up here. It's starting at the back. It's starting at that door when they walk in. It's starting at the driveway and they drive in and they need a parking so spot. We want to help them find it. Amen. Good. This starts from the very beginning. That's Everything right. that we do, every way that we show love to people That's has a beginning. Right. And we always think that we're not good enough or we're not enough or we're not important enough. But every one of you is so important to everything that we have going here. Right. To everything that God has going in his kingdom. And he loves you for that. That's and he appreciates you and he honors you for that. And that's why you can come in here and be happy and be joyful and know that even if your life is going... That's right. <laughs> To a place you never saw it going. You better believe. You know you have the hope. And that's why we're here. Because we know that God's doing big things in our life. I've seen it time and time again. I've put myself through life. And I've had life happen to me. And all the same. I'm standing right here. Because for one. The devil ain't about to beat me. You know why? It's not because I'm strong, because I'm not. I'm weak. God is strong in me. I'll tell you what. I'm, I am not strong, man. Amen. But I will tell you who is strong, God. And I'm going to tell you just how strong he is. He's able to push you through. He's able to walk through it. Amen. And when we get mad and say, God, I don't understand. We're doing, I'm doing all these things right. What are you talking about? Why is this happening to me? Because it's not by your works that you get into heaven. It's by him. We need to stop forgetting that. We talk about this Job season and going through what Job went through. It. He lost his wife. He lost his kids. They all died. He lost everything he had. He got sick. But at the end of the day, he had to remember it ain't about him. And God restored everything anyway because that's the kind of God we serve. We, got, we serve a God of restoration. He loves us so much. And he has given us all of these amazing, wonderful gifts that we get to use to minister to people. Yeah. They just started an evangelism team. If you're not on it, oh my goodness, let me yeah. tell you what. There ain't no one, nothing like going up to a stranger that tells you to leave them alone. Amen. <laughs> Come on, man. She ripped up my stuff today, dude. Somebody ripped up his stuff today. I was mad. I wanted to choke him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You, uh, you cast a demon out of Amen. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to end with one more gift And the reason that I'm going to end early Is because at the end of this We're going to do some words of knowledge That's Why? Good. Because we need to put practical application That's To right. what we're talking about yes. Right? We can't just come up here and say You have these gifts and we're not going to show you what they look like Amen. And I know you've seen them on Sundays But you get to see them again tonight Because <laughs> what? If you're hurting We got a guy that's going to make you jump <laughs> I'm yeah. telling you what, man. Y'all think I'm playing, man. Come on, somebody. Yeah. You guys are killing me. Yeah. Look here. Amen. So this last gift that I'm going to share with you is not on your paper, so quit looking for it. I'm going to write it on. I'm going to write it This last gift, you guys are going to have to write this down. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2. Amen. Who knows it off the top of their head? <laughs> he does. No, he does. Come on. Second Timothy, you said. Second Timothy, chapter two, verse two. Yeah. 
This for me has been the most important gift. The most important. Oh my gosh. Because it helps you to become the person that you are. Amen. If you only use your gift. Yeah. Yeah. I know you guys are excited right now, huh? Yeah. No idea. The anticipation's killing me. Right? Right? <laughs> the things which you have heard from me See. in the presence of my witnesses, entrust these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Good. So this last gift that I'm talking about, sitting here in the front row, mentors. Our brothers and sisters who are sitting out here. Yeah. Our greatest gift that we have is each other. Praise God. Right? God always talks about us being in one accord together. He talks about two or three coming together. He talks about how we're the body of Christ. Amen. And we work together. And the reason this is so important is because if you don't know what you go through this again, right? Redo this because there's so much. Great, so many great things in here that I didn't hit on because God just took me in a whole other direction. But let me tell you what, you need to read through this and get the study done, answer these questions, and I'm going to tell you why. Because you're going to figure out which one of these is your gift. It's yeah. good. And you're going to need to learn how to use it. Amen. It's not just going to come. You're not just going to say, oh, well, I have this gift, so this must be what I do. I've tried that and I've been wrong. No matter how right I thought I was. I was really, really wrong. And so we got to use Pastor and Pastor Greg. We got to use them. And I know they're more than willing to help any one of you. Amen. To, to learn your gift and to grow in your gift and to move in your gift. Amen. And I know this because with them, it's not just teaching, right? With a good leader, it's not just teaching. It's, it's implementing what you know. Amen. Right? It's implementing the big things. And I'm going to talk about how it implements the small things. Yeah. One more story. There's a guy. He went to church one day. He was with his girlfriend at the time. And he could not walk in the church. Mm. Something was happening with that day. And he couldn't bring himself to, couldn't bring himself to go in. And the pastor was in between services, noticed his girlfriend walked in, noticed he didn't come in, runs outside, finds him, he's out there, he just hugs him, right? He just hugs him and just lets him cry on his shoulder. Then he fixes his shirt, right? He says, all right, when you're done, come back inside or come inside. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Amen? That little piece of love helped that person who couldn't go in. Yeah. Who wasn't sure about going in. Yeah. Anymore because of what happened. Yeah. Be able to go in. And stand in front of you right now. Because this was a Beacon Hill. And it was him. That's the kind of pastor we have. Amen. He doesn't just get up and preach. He doesn't just go to your parties. And funerals. And weddings. And all of that. He loves you. There's a real love there. He will come out and give you a hug. And not speak into your life at all. But just give you that little piece that you need. That's the kind of leaders that you guys have here. And I need you to recognize it. Because that is what's going to help you to understand why you can keep coming. And why you can keep showing up. And how you can grow into being some fellow from White Center. <laughs> And to stand up here facing one of the most difficult things in your life. That's right. And still tell you how great your yeah, amazing God that's is. That's right. And knowing that he is about to be in a place that he's never seen. That's yeah. right. Amen. And that's what kind of love we have for each other. That's right. Brother Kevin over there, we just went out, had some had some food, sat back, just talked about life. I saw this ex of his over there hanging out, looking at him. I didn't know it that. <laughs> So oh yeah, <laughs> Doctor Mark over there always fixing me when I'm coming home crying and hurting. So Pastor Greg over here healing everybody, yeah. feeding you, me. feeding you, feeding you, man. Amen. 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 But that's what we have here. 
So I wanted to end with that. I wanted you guys to understand where you're at, what you have, and why it's so important to make sure that you are locked in. And make sure that you stay coming to the place where you need to be, where your home is, right? Because at the end of the day, we are here, man. We are here. Brother Paul over there gave me a nice little alligator belt I still wear. Yeah. <laughs> Chad over there. Yeah, you know what he Yeah, he saw me hanging from a tree on a rope and left me there and told everybody not to help me. I remember that. He still helped me, though. I beat Mitchie Luno today. I eat all of Lisa's food. My sister, I fuck her all the time. I tell you what, Robert, man. Yes. This is an amazing family that we have here, guys. Amen. Right. It is. Amen. And every one of us has gifts. That's right. And I hope you recognize what that gift is. And if you don't, get ready to learn about it. Amen. Because you're about to be using it. And don't just use this big gift that you have. Right. Use the small ones you have, too. Amen. 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 So good, Jay. I'm going to close this out with prayer real quick. And then we're going to start doing a little bit of words of knowledge. Amen. Is that good? That's good. Everybody here. Has everyone here accepted Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior before we move forward? Amen. It's crazy. I know everybody in here. <laughs> All right. Father God, we just want to thank you for this time. We just want to thank you for giving us this word. We just want to thank you for blessing us with gifts that we don't even deserve to have. But you saw fit to bless us with anyway so that we could go out and be able to minister to your people. And I start, and as we each find our gifts and as we each go out to minister these gifts I just pray that you just give exponential knowledge and wisdom and growth into each and every one of my brothers and sisters in this house including myself in your name we just give you all the honor and glory and praise in Jesus name Amen, Amen. so I'm going to have Pastor Gray come up here he says he's going to help me out with this <laughs> all right. um, off top if you got any problems with your tooth, if you're having a headache, come up. Um, if you're dealing with depression, and we're not talking about just a regular depression, you know what I'm talking about. I'm not going to look at anybody. But someone's going through some stuff. And it's more tough than just tough. Amen. So if anybody needs some prayer for anything, especially those three.